welcome to our review of inside the kidney so in our previous video we did talk about the kidney very briefly but you need to know a little bit more about it so first thing we're going to have a look at is the actual structure of the kidney itself so i've given you a nice diagram on the left hand side there with these key features labeled that you need to know which one's which just in case you're asked to label that diagram in the exam so if you remember the tube that goes from the kidney down to the bladder is the ureter coming into the kidney and supplying it with the blood is the renal artery and leaving the kidney to take the blood away from it the renal vein when you see the word renal it just means to do with the kidney the kidney then itself is divided up into three parts we have the capsule which is the outer membrane which helps keep the kidney shape and protect it from damage next bit in is the cortex which is the outer part of the kidney there and then you've got the medulla which is the inner part of the kidney when we zoom in on what's actually inside those kidneys then the actual structures that carry out the most important part of our kidney which is this filtering process is something called a nephron now inside each of your kidneys you've got about 1 million nephrons so you can imagine they're very very small the top of the nephron is found within the cortex and the lower section including the loop of henle is found in the medulla so now we know the bits of a kidney we need to actually know what they do in terms of its actual function so what we see first of all is that blood enters the kidney under high pressure through the renal artery now each branch of the renal artery is going to eventually lead to this little ball of blood vessels called the glomerulus so it's a knot of capillaries so you can see at the bottom there I've given you a close-up of it so you can see the blood entering on the left hand side there and then it forms that little knot of capillaries where the blood's going to pass through before leaving on the right hand side there so in order to actually make sure that we get this high blood pressure then the blood vessels narrow at the exit to the glomerulus so that means the blood pressure will be increased when we've got that high blood pressure within the glomerulus it's actually going to force small molecules like our water and glucose and the urea out of the capillary walls and into the structure called the Bowman's capsule which is that kind of yellow u-shaped bit you can see in the bottom left any large molecules so things like the actual red blood cells white blood cells large proteins etc they're too big to fit through the capillary wall and so they remain within the blood so this process by which we're pushing some bits out into the Bowman's capsule but not everything this is called ultra filtration so ultrafiltration happens within the glomerulus high pressure forces small molecules out through the capillary wall into the Bowman's capsule and the large molecules remain in the blood so from the Bowman's capsule if you look at the diagram in the bottom right you can see that yellow tube that then continues on down so that filtrate is going to move through the nephron tubule and as it does so all of the glucose is reabsorbed now it's not just glucose that's going to be reabsorbed here some of the water and any salts that our body needs are also reabsorbed back into the blood and that's a process called selective reabsorption we're only reabsorbing the bits that we actually need in our body the rest of the filtrate as you can see just carries on through passes through the loop of henley which is that big long drop down and then into the collecting ducts on the left hand side there this is where any extra salt and water is reabsorbed as and when our body needs them anything left over within that collecting duct that is the waste solution and that's going to travel down through the ureta to the bladder where excretion will then occur at a convenient time we hope so in order to control the amount of urine that we're actually making then we use a negative feedback system and this relies on the hormone called antidiuretic hormone or ADH and what ADH actually does is it makes the walls of the collecting ducts more permeable to water 
So this lovely simple diagram, and I promise it is simple, even though I know you're looking at it and thinking, yeah, right. Then this is going to show us what happens to control the amount of water within our body. So if we start in the centre, we can see the hypothalamus, which is part of our brain, if you remember, is going to detect the water potential of the blood. So if we go up the left hand side, first of all, the water concentration is too high. So that then sends a message to the pituitary gland to then release less ADH. That means that our kidney tubules will reabsorb less water so that our blood water potential is restored to normal and we produce lots of urine because we won't reabsorb as much water at all. Then if we go the other way, in this case back to the centre again, the hypothalamus detects the water potential of our blood is actually too low in its concentration there. Therefore the pituitary gland is then signalled to release more ADH. The ADH then travels to the kidneys. It then causes the kidney tubules to reabsorb more water which restores our blood water to normal and we produce a much smaller amount of urine because what we're seeing here is the water is being reabsorbed into the blood so there's less to pass into the urine so the volume is decreased. Hopefully at the end of this video you can now identify the structures present in the kidney. You can describe the function of the different regions of a nephron and explain how ADH determines the amount of water that is reabsorbed.